G'day guys, welcome to Spacey's Arcade and for another VR treat, I cannot believe this guys, we are looking at the Time Capsule Arcade which has been created by the same guy who was part I think of the, of the team that did um, the Neon Arcade, the VR one that was out a long time ago and he's created this uh, on his own non-commercial product and we're just by the door inside the arcade just looking outside just thought I'd show you that first before we just swing around and look at the ground floor of this phenomenal virtual arcade and with all the VR stuff we've had lately and with our ability to play you know VPX and VR and now also with uh, the uh, Unreal Engine VR and being able to do pinball effects, <clears throat> we now have this, this beautiful arcade recreation uh, to play with. And guys, this is, this is actually modelled on an arcade that's in uh, is it Pasadena? Pasadena? <laughs> I don't know my American. Pasadena, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, um, <clears throat> but you can see on, I've got multiple levels that um, uh, that we can go to, and we're on the, the the bottom level of this arcade. Now I'll try not to sort of move my head around too much, guys. I know what it's like watching, um, you know, when you're watching someone with, in VR. Um, but yeah, I I just I couldn't believe this when I loaded this up. <laughs> Like the old um, Neon Retro Arcade NRA was awesome. It had a really nice, you know, grungy sort of feel of an old arcade. Uh, this was a little, sort of a little bit of a lighter feel uh, currently with the way this one's modelled. But the arcade cabinets were never properly done. They weren't real. Um, and yet here they are all modelled. And I mean, look at this X-Men, the six player X-Men guys. And the other cool thing is that it has all the attract modes, as well as modeling uh, all the cabinets correctly. And all the attract modes are going off at once, guys. So you get that real sensation of being in an arcade and hearing all the attract modes. Now the attract modes are videos. Um, and if you do want to play a game, then you can you know, hop up to it and play. And we will play a game in a second. I just want to sort of show you a few things first. It's running uh, using main 2010. And um, you have to get the ROMs yourself, of course. But uh, other than that, you drop the ROMs in. And you can then go and play, you know, any, any of your favorite games. And the attention to detail of this is what absolutely stuns me. This looks just like a real, this is probably not the best machine to choose because we don't have a really nice bezel, but we'll have plenty of time to look at a few others. But just, you can even see just across the top of this black bar, so it's got some little rust marks there down the side of the bezel. You can see dirt, um, you know, on the T-molding, just little scratches and stuff. Um, this one, the buttons, yeah, they've got a little bit of bit of dirt around them. It's the same texture with these particular ones, but I think you know over time, if, if you change, you know, had some multiple different buttons with slightly different dirt, it would just make it even more unbelievable. But it, it, it's it's stunning, guys. It's stunning. These these cabs have just been beautifully recreated to the point I mean look at this look at the reflection here off this um, control panel you know so it's almost it, it almost looks like it's got the decal on there it's almost like sort of bubbling it, the textures are just amazing and you know, it's to the it's to the point where you know if you didn't collect arcade machines but you wanted to re-experience how they were back in the day this is the way to do it I, I can't I can't I can't even I mean I was gushing over the last video when doing the pinball effects and um, they are 
to get this now and have arcades to this level of detail. Just look at that control panel shine and all the little divots and dings in it. It's just mind blowing guys. All the right artwork. There's beautiful Tato cabs here. By the way, I think it's going to implement a, a smooth way of um, moving. At the moment, it is the sort of um, jump to position, which is actually not so bad anyway if you're a little bit prone to being sort of VR sickness from the smooth motion. This is better to sort of jump and then just turn around. But the, the turning around motion would be nicer if this was just smooth and you, you know, rather than jumping. Um, I'm not sure if he'll implement those things, but he's just doing this on his own, guys. The one-man team is doing it as a, a labour of love and passion, and I can see it. You know, and he's taken so much time to get these machines right. And he's continuing to build more and more of these beautiful machines. All right, Stan, just look at it, guys. Look here. It's got the rust around the screws, the bolts around the joystick. You know, you've got different, there's here's some different buttons. These have got different sort of um, wear marks, dirt marks on them. Just, it's just outstanding. It's just outstanding, guys. Asteroids. Yeah, you, it, it really is like, you know, it's the next best thing to owning all of these machines. And again, you never, you're never going to get the impression of what it's like in VR watching it uh, on YouTube, unfortunately, guys, because you're just seeing it, you know, on a 2D screen. But you've got to imagine, if you haven't got VR, those of you who have VR and have used it will know exactly what I mean. But if you haven't got it, you just got to think that when you're look, when I'm looking at this, I'm standing in this room, and this is these cabinets are all life size to me, uh, and that to me is just amazing. Turtles in time, going back round the row here, guys. Look at that beautiful joust. The Rockola Eyes cab. Some more Tato cabs here. Zerion elevator action. I, I just can't believe it. Look at the. Can I come back here a little bit? We've got wear. Look at this wear mark on the side of the of this aliens. And look at even if I go, if look at down the side of this paintwork, guys. That's exactly how the, the side of these arcades look. These sort of slightly mottled black. Oh man. Now, you know, he's done some basic modeling, and I say basic, it's still awesome, of the of the environment. And you know, he can obviously do a lot more uh, over time, but he's really focusing at the moment, which I think is fantastic. He's focusing on the games, and he's focusing on getting more and more cabinets done. Um, and I'd far rather he keep doing that and focusing on just getting more and more of these beautiful cabinets recreated because this is the way to enjoy them. That's it, Riders. Got a nice berserk there. Original Defender. There's <sighs> a Jungle King. You know, and this is, we didn't get this in NRA. You didn't get these, they had these sort of basic cabs and um, they didn't have, you know, the absolute original cabs. You could swap in graphics, textures and stuff, but the actual cabinet shapes weren't right. Um, whoops, I didn't want to move there because I wanted to show you again the side of Pac-Man and the scratches. You know, you can see the, the, the glass on the bezel. Pac-Man Plus. I'm stunned, guys. I am stunned yet again with this beautiful Ray looking back there to the Defender. We've got the Tempest. I own a Moon Patrol, and that's exactly what it looks like. 
exactly what it looks like. The Zookeeper, Sinistar. Now he did say, I think he's sort of looking into doing some car cab stuff, but that's a lot more work, a lot more difficult to do. But he's looking into that. Um, again, a solo team of himself. Uh, and a passion, and, you can, and he's clearly got a passion. Funnily enough, the way he's got these machines laid out in here is sort of how I would have it. <laughs> the way he's got, he's mixed this up and he's got all the Nintendo cabs down the back here and uh, got the Namcos on the left here, the Pac-Mans, Bosconian, and then right down here, I'll just jump down the end here. We got the old Jump Bug and Wizard of War, and it's almost like you know these are the two two games that might um, might be pushed to the back in an arcade. They're, they're, they're good games, but you know <laughs> it's just funny how he's placed these. Um, I feel like I would do something very very similar. He's he's definitely really really passionate about arcades and getting the genuine feel. You know he's got a little console down here again. None, you don't have any extra consoles or anything like you do when. Uh, in NRA um, back in the day but a lot of that stuff for me was you know just little extras it's cool we've got the TV here I think you can swap out the video file for that that's playing um, but to me the main thing uh, in NRA as well as, well as here um, was always about the arcade machines themselves and you know this just this is blows me away you've got a button to go uh, stand up and sit down I was actually in sit down mode which is sort of um, seems about the right sort of height anyway you can adjust your height and your VR settings to get the two uh, but you might, might want to go up and down and sit down because we do have some other machines that we will sit down to guys because this is just one of several floors <laughs> it's one of several floors so what we should do is hop over here let's just have a look at uh, the Popeye. Come on, guys. This is insane. If you can't afford or you don't have the space to have a real arcade with all real arcade cabinets, you don't want to deal with fixing the damn things, um, this is your next best option. And in some ways better because you don't have to fix them you don't have to pay for them once you've got your vr set up you can just enjoy all your nostalgia and guys who knows you know what he's going to put down the track in in this uh environment um i've currently got music turned off because of obviously copyright but it's got a music player and so you can crank up the music and the tunes in here guys um, you know, it would be nice later to have the lighting controls and stuff because it'd be really nice to get in a dark, dingy, old 80s environment. Just have it exactly like this, but just dark. Maybe some more black lights and stuff. But guys, I'm not complaining at all uh, about the environment because these, just these machines are so incredible. So, look, I'm at one of my favourite games here, Galaga. And the, the positioning is sort of a little, little tricky, I must admit. But I think once he puts that um, smooth movement, you'll be able to line yourself up. But if, if you just look at this now, and again, for me, I am, this is in front of me, guys. This is a Galaga machine in front of me. This is how it was back in the day. It's got a little bit of dirt, you know, on the control panel right next to the fly button there, just like it used to. Um, it's incredible. So I've got a, another little control. So obviously we've got the VR controls. But I've also just got a normal um, fight stick control. What I need to do first is I need to start the main game. Now I must admit, I'm still unsure exactly how I'm pulling this off. It's two, right? No, no, it's not two. Oh, it is two. Okay, I don't know why I did, I don't know if you saw that with a little break in the graphics there. Normally it's just, just straight in. Um, so that's now loading, as you can see. It's doing the boot sequence. So we're now playing we're now playing the main ROM. And if you just sort of jumped into the video right now and just saw me sort of, you know, looking around, 
in the arcade here. You might be fooled in thinking that I'm playing a real cab. <laughs> that is the incredibleness of it. So I can put in a credit and start a game of Galaga. And I, I, I don't know what to say. Oops, we've got a little bit of uh, resetting of movement there, but that'll be more, more likely my headset. But, you know, I, I sat here and played a game, and I just, I got, I got lost in it. I, I got lost in it. It's just because the peripheral vision, and of course the peripheral vision on, on, on the VR itself is much bigger than the screen that you're seeing, guys. You're not seeing everything that I'm seeing. Um, and because of that peripheral, even though obviously in VR you still have a bit that's cut off, so you don't see your full peripheral vision, but you do see enough. You know, you see enough of this side area here, and enough of, of this side and the top and stuff and the control panel, that when you keep playing, you, you literally feel like you are transported into this place. Like, my, my, the, the VIP lounge that we're in right now is gone for me, guys. <laughs> it's gone. I'm in the arcade right now. Now, there is a little bit of lag, and I don't know if that's something that can be improved or what's actually causing that. There's a little bit of lag to the control, so right now, I don't think I'd be doing sort of any high score attempts in this environment. Um, I'd be coming in playing for fun. Uh, but yeah, it's just like a... I don't know how much it is, maybe 0.3 of a second or something. But it's enough to be noticeable. You, your brain can adjust for it, of course. Um, but anyway, like we're not here for you to <laughs> watch me play Galaga. Although, <laughs> I really feel like having a game. Oh, okay, no, maybe not. <laughs> I really feel like having a game. Man, I mean... <laughs> it's the beauty of man. So, look, and, and the other cool thing is, as you can see, that the other attract modes and everything are still going. And if you've got music playing, it's also positional. So the music sort of morphs a little bit. I feel like that that could be adjusted a little bit. Maybe you can do that over time because it's a little too much. You sort of move your head, get all in your right ear and none in your left. Go all the way down to the back of the arcade and you can't hear any, hear any music when in real life you would. So I think that needs to be tuned down at some point um, just to be a little bit more even. But yeah, the, the fact that um, the other uh, the others are going is incredible. Now there is, I know, I think he said that you can have so many other machines on. I don't know if it covers the whole floor. I can see the tra track modes right down the end are still going. Um, but then after that, you sort of, the, you can't have the track modes on like, you know, a hundred machines going sort of thing. I, I don't think, I'm not quite sure of the limitations there. But yeah, guys, and look, and you can just walk away now if I walk away, I think over a small period of time, then that game will actually stop playing. Um, but if I go back, let's just see if the ROM is still there. I think if you walk away, then it's not there and you'd have to reload it again. See if it's still there. Can't tell because of the... Yeah, so yeah, so it's I'm, I'm back into the thing, so I'd have to reload it. But that's, you know, that, that's cool. You can also, in the menu system, it's actually got um, shut down active game, so you can force it to do that. And I think there's some situation where you, it's probably best to do that when you finish the game, just to avoid a particular crash. Because this is early, early sort of alpha, if you like, guys, yet yeah, it's complete and playable. So, you know, if you, I'll put the link to this Discord forum. You guys got to go in there and give this, sing this guy some praises and support the guy. As he's do, he's not, he doesn't have a Patreon or anything. Um, he's just doing it out of pure passion and out of his own time. So please respect that because um, I'd love to see him continue his work at the pace that he wants to go. And 
just you know continue with with his journey and I think because he's got so much passion for arcades clearly whatever he comes up with is just you know even if he stopped right now guys this is incredible it is incredible look at look at the look at the marks on the T molding there on this defender I'll try and play defender actually because it's actually a pretty tricky game to play with the controls right but it is already everything was mapped I haven't done anything although the mapping I think of this could be changed but obviously you just go into MAME and change it so that's no no drama there oh I keep forgetting I've got to so let's start the game <laughs> it's just crazy guys so we'll play some defender play some defender <sighs> and you can see we've got a bit of light reflection and stuff Again, as I said, having this in the, in the dark, having just the option to switch the lights off and have all these dark screens, you know, because some, some people, and for myself, a lot of the time it was always in a very dark, lit environment. That defender sound. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do my controls up. Reverse buttons up. <laughs> Whoops. And that's my hyperspace button. So yeah guys, I need to remap the controls. They're not quite in the in the space area where I'd like them. But it's pretty cool that you can sort of just hop straight in. Oh, whoops. Hop straight in and play. But yeah, just going to main doing the old tab. We'll sort that out. Love that sound of Defender when you hit that man falls just at the end of the completion of the stage. So where's my smart bomb? No, no, not it. Sit down here, oh shit. <laughs> the only thing is I can't see my keys. It's the hard way. <laughs> oh guys, I just had a game of Defender in the arcade. <laughs> Wow, what a year it is for arcades and VR. Okay, let's let's just show you now quickly, guys, just some of the other rooms, and uh, and then you, you know, and and I'd actually suggest <laughs> I wouldn't normally do this, um, but you may even want to stop the video and get it loaded up if you've got VR uh, and go explore yourself, because I think one of the I'm still going to go through it and show it. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, but I, one of the amazing things for me was just going in and going, oh, they've got this, they've got that cabinet, you know? And just, and it'll be the same as, you know, when you when you went into an arcade back in the day, it was like, oh, they've got the Zerk, they've got it here. The original cab, Defender. And it was part of the excitement. So I don't want to, don't want to spoil it all for you. Uh, look at this, we've got the little change machine as well. Uh, obviously nothing else in here is uh, operational except for the arcades, but guys, that's all we need. <laughs> I like the fact you can just look outside here. Um, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Alright guys, so let, let me show you. Let's have a little walk around. Now we've got, um, he's got up to six other levels so there's seven levels in total two of them he's taken offline because they have generic cabs actually from the nra program and he's he, he really is keen to get them all in the real cabs he hasn't got every single game in the real cabs and some of the games he wants to do are in some generic cabs but we'll see that a bit later on let's get up to level one 
Bam. And there we are. We are in another room. And what do I spy down there? Some candy cabs. <laughs> well, we are went a little freaky there for a minute. So yeah, um, cool pictures on the walls. Oh, I've actually got these controllers for my room. What have I done here? Oh, there we go. Some cool stuff on the walls. And just a different environment. I love this uh, paint scratched off the bottom of the wall there. Another different type of change box. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> See how it is, uh, it looks glory. The fact, guys, that you can just come in here and play any of these. On the original cab. Gauntlet. Gauntlet 2. Oh, I've got to cut the sound, guys. Hang on. All right, so back. Jungle Hunt. There was a Jungle King downstairs. Revo 2, Tetris. Lucky O here. Vendetta. Stand up. Crawling around on the floor. Tetris. And then look at this guys. Candy Cab. Aero Cities. Now, and they're playing all of the typical Japanese games that you would expect, schmucks and so forth, on a row of Japanese Aero Cities. Over time, um, it would be nice to see if you could recreate the Astro City and the Sega Blast just to have a, you know, have some variation uh, with these um, Japanese cabs because those people that really do like that whole Japanese scene um, really do appreciate the, you know, the different cabs. You've got the this Namco ones and there's other Taito ones and stuff, but that's probably. You know, I'm not sure what his interest level is in, in those, and it's all up to him. Um, in some ways, you know, I'd far rather he do all the originals from the 80s as a priority, uh, and you know, nice to have later if we have all the different Japanese cabs. But for now, we have all these Aero Cities. And again, you know, you can get down in the lower position, a little bit close. I think just the moving around is a little a little tricky until we get the sort of smooth movement. But yeah guys, you know, get yourself in front of a uh, Aero City and knock yourself out. And you know, and you're and you're sitting in a in a in an array of them. Oh wow. In heaven guys. Pick up on the marquees lit up on the top there. Oh a little breeze from the aircon. Um but it's still really hot here today in Perth. And I just felt the breeze and I, I my brain was thinking it's coming from the fan on the roof. <laughs> they are. Oh wow. So there you go, so, so that's another quick look uh, at th this uh, first floor there. So now if we move out of here, let's go, we can't go to the second level, we'll just do this and um, yeah, we can't go to second or third, so we go from the first level to the fourth level. Again, I need to cut the sound, I think. Although it's not here now, but I think it will be when I get in, I'll have to cut the music. So that's one thing you might want to change, is that if you turn the music down and you change floors, you want to keep it um, 
where the music's down. Maybe even a little indicator to show the vo the volume level, because I think if you keep going down, 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 and down, it then starts going back up, even with the same button. But anyway, the minor things. Again, this is a this is an alpha alpha. So expect these things. Look, look, he's got all these uh, records stuck up on the wall, and it's it, you know even though these this is just you know this is not the focus of it right now. I love the fact that they're on there like just slightly uneven. It's like how they how they would be if you stuck them up there yourself. <laughs> uh, we'll just come back here and admire this a little. And uh, yeah, half of these albums are albums that I would, uh, you know, record covers that I'd stick up on the wall. And given the fact that I do stick up, you know, I stick up my CD cases and stuff, and, and I have got records the the smaller singles up on the wall, which is funny. Uh, feel feel we're right at home, <laughs> right at home. So look at this, and it's a beautiful, another nice location. This floor with its brickwork, and we have a whole room here of candies. So again, oh, I've got to turn the music off, guys. Sorry, hang on. So yeah, um, another full room of candies. Metal slug. This is it, guys. This is your uh, this is your home arcade, multi-floor home arcade. Go and play anything you like. Funnily enough, there's this little secret room at the back here. Well, it's not really secret. But you can't go in and the stairs leading up to a dead end. So I'm not sure if he's going to link all the floors at some point where you could actually walk from one room to the other. Not sure if that's possible. You get it? <laughs> you get it, guys? You get why I am just so spun out? Wow, so a lot of these games here look like the sort of games that would be on Aero Cities and not original cabs. What a selection. What a selection. All right, so we go from the fourth to now the fifth level. Then we'll need to turn the music down. Oh, that's the, um, it's in a track mode. <laughs> so is the music up at the moment? This is the only thing I can't gauge. Actually, a, a, just a music mute button would actually be pretty cool on there, if that's it, easy to implement. All right. I'm not sure if I've got music now or not. But as we look here, let's just pop in here and then we'll turn ourselves around a little. And Final fight. Gosh, look how beautiful these are. Golden axe. Altered beast. Man, it's, it's just, you know, when, you, when you're a collector of arcade machines, when you see these out in the wild, you know, this is the sort of thing that just makes your heart go. And to just see the, all of these just so perfectly recreated. You know, it's like when you're buying and collecting replicates, guys. It's very, very similar. Yet here you have them all, and you can play them all in in, in a life size, in an environment, in an arcade environment. Back in the day, you can crank up the music, obviously. Um, you don't worry about copyright in your house. And we got yeah, Akari Warriors, Victory Row. How beautiful these are. Look at this, even the even this speaker panel. Just the colouring of the it's just it's just exactly right. I can't can't get over. Why well, this is so so amazing regardless that you can't do anything else in here except play the games it's like it's all you want to do 
and just stand and admire these cabinets. You know, I think if there was like a you know darkened mode and stuff, it, it would be similar to me standing and looking at my own arcades and just watching them having a drink, right? Like you could have that same experience here, but then just go up and then play any of your favorite games. Ghouls and ghosts. Look at the look at the marks on the glass. It's an, again, it's indistinguishable from a real life machine. It's just the the black coloration on the panels. It's the attention to detail. It's just, it just blows the mind. You know, I'm half expecting to, you know, get my head inside and look in the cabinet and see the PCBs, guys. <laughs> Alright, so this is a little room, a little cosy room here with a lot of really beautiful machines. And once again, you can just sit around and admire the artwork and again, listen to the attract mode. This is the experience, this is it. NRA could never do this, could, could give you this pure arcade experience. And no other program out there can do it. And this guy's made it available for free to the community. And the amount of work that he's already put into this, and it's just astounding. So again, guys, please respect his time because he is doing it as passion, not doing it for money. I'm sure he would appreciate any of your suggestions, and you know, he can consider those. Uh, in, in the mix of his own thoughts that his thoughts are a priority and whatever he comes up with I'm sure it's going to be sweet as this continues to develop because as I said before I'd, I'd just be happy with it as it is <laughs> you left it right here I'm 100% happy this is beautiful but anything extra is just going to be candy it's going to be you know it's going to be amazing to see any new release cabinet it's going to be exciting all right, let's go to the last level, the sixth level. Okay, and do we have music, or is we that still? Sounds like the music's still off. So, yeah, I wonder if that music only reset from. The very floor level to the first. I can't. I'm not sure now. I have to check that later. Because yeah, no, it's definitely off. So guys, here we have. I, I, I think actually also it, it put me back down into a seating position when I came in here. Yeah, so I don't know if that's a thing. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my VR is just trying to sort itself out. So we've got a, a room here of more Aero Cities. Um, and the interesting thing in here is that you can see games like Centipede. Um, that's Crystal Castles, isn't it? Uh, is that Satan's Hollow on the end there? What's this one here in the middle? Not sure what that is. On the blueprint. No, I don't know what that is. Um, but you know, and my favourite, Scramble, got Rampage, got Galaga 88. Now a lot of these machines, guys, uh, he, I believe he's intending that he, he wants to get them into their real cabinets. But he's just put them up here for now. Got Mappy over there. We've got Paperboy. Can you imagine Paperboy guys in a real cabinet in here? That would just be awesome. You know, and Star Wars and all that. So I think those cabinets, so I think he made a point of in, in his Discord forum. Anything that's like a one-off cabinet that, you know, doesn't support multiple titles, they're going to probably go down the list because he's trying to, you know, get as many cabinets as he can get done. So this cabinet that you know shares the same machine shape but different artwork then he's going for those first so that's fair enough um, but yeah so you can see a lot of games here that um, you know even break out on the end obviously you wouldn't be in an aero city normally but if you want to come and play them they're still here because one of the things is you can't swap in other roms um, you've got to use the ones that are here but there's so many guys that you, you know Look, I mean, it's just a gazillion machines in here. 
and across all the levels you've got more than enough to play and you know going through all the titles they're all the really really good titles he's gonna i think he's looking at doing light gun support that would just be incredible we might actually sort of get a real feel in vr for playing light gun games properly again as they were you know it's <sighs> <laughs> oh guys just it's a dream it's a dream wow <laughs> wow <laughs> all right okay so I'm gonna just pop back down to the Pasadena level and um, just turn this music off because that's gonna kill it. Alright, music is off. So, yeah, look, um, I'm going to leave it there guys Whew. it's hot what do you think what do you think of that I'm, I'm speechless I'm speechless this is exactly you know years ago and when NRA came out it was like oh I wish they had the real cabinets like the real shapes and that would just make it so much better because the environment in NRA is pretty cool it's all dark and dingy and lights and you've got bowling alleys and all sorts of stuff but as I said before all that stuff to me was all this at a side it was about getting the cabinets right and accurate and having just the level of detail of art and the little you know imperfections and everything it's an overload you know this is third or fourth time I've got into the the, the uh, game, as we call it that, or the environment, um, since downloading it, it still blows me away. It's still, I still get lost in it. I forget, actually, that I'm in VR. I mean, obviously, talking with you guys I've sort of reminded me, but when I put this on, especially when you go up and you start playing a game, you get lost. The, at the time just goes you hope our hours have passed. Links are down below, guys. If you've got VR, check it out. I think if you don't have VR, if you can, I know it's, it is expensive and stuff, and it's not accessible to all. I don't know if the, the Quest 3 and stuff is going to be more accessible and, um, you know, have the level of quality and stuff. But if you can get VR, guys, or if you're thinking about investing in something in your arcade side of things this year, VR, for me, is where it's at. Um, you know, clearly it's nice to have real arcade stuff and all the rest of it. But if you could only have one, <laughs> VR now has got you covered. It's got you covered in pinball and it's got you covered here be so awesome if at some stage there could be pimple machines modeled here that then actually you know load vpx i don't even know if that would be possible uh because of course vpx you could you'd have the table in vr so if there was some way of you know linking the engines together i'm sure that would be a huge amount of work uh but imagine that imagine having pimple machines in this environment <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to come out to see the light of day ever again you just live in there all right enough of me banging on because i'm just i'm getting emotional now so let's leave it there but guys i hope you enjoy this and uh get in get into some virtual arcade until the next one ciao for now